so my name's Tim, I am 36 years old. Uh, I am uh, married to Chrissy. We've got a daughter, Hannah, who's eight years old. I was diagnosed in 2011. Um, I had my first symptoms actually when, in 2007, so that's 10 years ago, I'd lost all the feeling in my right hand. I went deaf in my right ear. Uh, um, but at the time, uh, uh, it was sort of things like, they thought it might be cobbles tunnel syndrome in my hand. My mum turned around and said, you're getting married, so it's stress um, and all that type of thing. Uh, and in 2011, we'd been on holiday and there were points during the holiday where I was knackered and it was really, really strange. And we got back from holiday and on a Sunday, I got out of bed and fell over, just, just kind of lapsed on the floor. And um, over the following two weeks, I was having a really bad foot drop with my right foot. Uh, and eventually, Chrissy sent me off to the doctors and sort of, will you please go to the doctors? Um, and um, going through various, you know, sort of tests that a GP does. And then I show, there's one moment where I showed uh, how my legs wobbled and I remember the sort of alarm bells going off in my GP's eyes. Uh, and I was, um, yeah sent off to a neurologist. I was a bit of a nightmare in refusing to, to let it kind of slow me down. And I actually then went through a phase over about two or three years where I was relapsing every quarter or so. It, I, I was sort of having a relapse, getting a bit better, then having another relapse. And I was kind of going through this, I also went through the phase of having to start using a walking stick to um, having to start using a wheelchair outdoors because I remember Chrissy turned around to me one day and kind of go I saw you walking home yesterday there's no way you can carry on walking home to um, uh, uh, what was how many years ago three years ago now of I have to use a wheelchair indoors and outdoors and so um, uh, I've not uh, I'm trying to write the find the right phrase but I've kind of got used to it but at the same time, I will still look at my wheelchair and growl at it. And then I'll turn around and go, no, but it lets me get places. And it's that kind of sort of battle between, um, I, kind of, I put it once between um, dignity and at the same time being out allowed to do stuff. And yeah, I do growl at it. <laughs> Properly. <laughs> we used to be a very spontaneous sort of family. We'd just kind of go and do something. And now it's sort of have to plan it, have to work out that where we're going is accessible, yeah, is there, gonna, is there somewhere I can go to the loo, all that kind of stuff is, is put into it as well. Um, so that becomes, it, it becomes frustrating and difficult, but at the same time there, there are moments uh, when, when we've done that that are really important, like going, we went to Hannah's first gig a couple of weeks ago. Um, it's one of my favourite artists that I managed to persuade her to like. <laughs> uh, but that was great. It was such a great night out for the three of us as a family, just to kind of know that, yeah, it will work. She doesn't really remember a kind of pre-MS me. Um, she doesn't even really remember a pre, not having to use a wheelchair me. Um, we actually used you the MS Trust's uh, guide to MS for Kids. Um, which was really great as a kind of initial start through. And then last year, I think it was, we went on the BART and the London Understanding Science workshop that they run, which was fantastic. I, I learned stuff about MS that I had forgotten and all this kind of thing. That f and that for her was really, really good. Um, we've also had the thing of we're really, uh, um, I am very open with her about what's happening. So she understands when daddy is in bed and daddy ah, can't get up and things like that. And so she understands that we're open about how I am when you, you know things are going really wrong. Um, and I think it's built up the huge empathy with, with her, which is really, really lovely to see. But she knows uh, something, she, she knows when something's not, not right. Um, if my voice fails, she points me to my app on my iPad, which you can type in, and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, she's really resilient to it. Um, but equally, I know it also it does really upset her too. So, I am a slight nightmare of a dad that loves winding his daughter up 
and uh, I get great joy out of that. Um, I am, I've really enjoyed recently doing more cooking with her, um, you know, teaching her how to chop properly with a really sharp knife. Um, and she is also, she does Latin and ballroom dancing. And I absolutely love watching that. And um, uh, it's even last Christmas or the Christmas before at her dance school, the choreographers uh, choreographed a dance for the two of us to do with me in my wheelchair. You know, you know there wasn't a dry eye in the house sort of thing. It was, but it was lovely. It's, it, that's something I love watching her doing and knowing she's getting good at. Both Chrissy and myself have always been sort of, it, it's important to be honest, it's important for her to understand what's happening. Um, and she knows and enjoys things like, you know, if I stretch out in the morning and my legs go into an enormous level of spasm, she loves nothing more than diving on top of me to stop them. So, yeah. <laughs>